My pleasure to be part of the massive open online course dealing with information and elections in the digital era, which is organized by UNESCO, UNDP and partners. My name is Janet Love and I'm Vice Chairperson of the Electoral Commission of South Africa. In this session, I hope to look at the electoral cycle while focusing on the use of AI. I want to look at opportunities and how to reduce and prevent potential negative impacts. So what is positive? We know that AI can be used for disinformation, abuse and misinformation, but it can also be used in a number of positive ways. Here are a few examples. Firstly, artificial intelligence can strengthen the communication of an election management body to be able to ensure that the election management body links up more effectively with the public. It also supports the EMB in its relationships with the mainstream media. Secondly, artificial intelligence can help an EMB to create equalized access to its information by a range of citizens. It can help with translation, it can help to ensure people who are unable to read can hear the information and so on. Thirdly, artificial intelligence can help EMBs verify information. Fourthly, election management bodies can increase and improve the training of their own officials. They can use artificial intelligence to help with the training of party agents and even observers. Artificial intelligence can help election management bodies monitor societal events, what's happening and where is it happening. And in this way, EMBs, together with security and other players, can have an early warning about potential problem areas and work to mitigate and prevent those problems from occurring. Artificial intelligence can help EMBs monitor their own performance. And so this will enable necessary improvements. And a last example, artificial intelligence can strengthen public confidence in an EMB. It can do this because the EMB can use AI to increase transparency in general, but also it can use bots to answer frequently asked questions. It can expand opportunities for the EMBs to engage with the public. It's true that with every positive opportunity, like the examples that I've mentioned, there are always going to be two challenges that are implied. The first challenge is that for each positive opportunity, an EMB will need to ensure that it uses digital, digital technology, which is based on its own system, its own needs. There are very few occasions where we can just buy things off the shelf. And this means that capacity needs to be developed in the EMB, and this involves investment, it involves trained officials, and it involves planning and ongoing review. The second challenge is that for each positive opportunity, we need to identify the associated risks and take steps to mitigate and prevent these. So let's dig a bit deeper. It's vital to ensure that artificial intelligence helps us to put facts and data within the public domain. For this, we need the creation of a repository of official messages, of adverts, of branding. And so that's the capacity that the election management body needs to develop. To build relationships with the public and mainstream media, throughout the election cycle, we need to be able to put out information that we need in any case during elections, but which can also be used by other actors, such as the mainstream media. For example, we need to know population figures with ages, genders, geographic location, together with those who are eligible to vote for our work as election management bodies. But this data can be regularly attached to news and opinion about other developments, not only during the time of elections, but throughout our election cycle. Another example, artificial intelligence we know, 
cannot be seen as a replacement for contact that is direct with people, whether it's the staff or the public at large. But through AI, we can have the potential to make such personal interactions even more effective. AI, for example, can help us to produce materials in different languages, to enable us to use audio and braille for people who cannot read. But as I indicated, there are always going to be risks. Firstly, aside from the investment that we have to make, one of the risks in the case of, of translation would be that we need to be sure that it's checked and confirmed with local people so that local idioms are catered for. AI offers significant opportunities for greater experiential learning. This can help us train electoral officials, especially those officials that we need to take on for very often short-term periods during elections. Issues that regularly confront voting station staff can be simulated using AI. Online materials can be developed and testing can take place about how an election must be conducted. And these can be produced and used in combination with in-person training. In addition, voter education material can be developed to engage young people around questions of democracy and to help us provide information about candidates and choices to encourage young people to increase their participation in voting. Enhancing transparency and trust in election management bodies can really be helped through AI, through the provision of online information about what the EMB is doing. It can also include things like our recruitment. It can make our training materials more accessible. It can give information about registration deadlines, location of polling stations, and also it can be used in the transmission of electoral results. So AI has huge potential that is positive. What about the risks? We know that digital technology has enabled pathways for the dissemination of false and misleading information that is related to elections and that has taken place in a manner that circulates on a scale and at a speed that has never been seen before. We know that the rules of every algorithm that are which are developed are there to guide access, select, organize, and present information. And these rules will be customized. And we know that social media platforms often use these rules to drive their recommender systems. These are not unbiased. We know that artificial intelligence enables micro-targeting, that is where you have personal data being analyzed to identify the specific interests of individuals so that those who are using this data, and they often use it on an unauthorized basis, will be able to influence and manipulate voters. We cannot always see where AI is at work, and this is another risk, a growing risk, because of generative AI. Generative AI uses selected information to produce new content without further human intervention, and this content can be even more harmful. But we do know from experience that internet shutdowns are not the solution. Not only have they failed in the past, but they have also shut down the positive potential of the internet. They leave the internet and AI open only to those who invest and continue to invest in mischief. So while internet shutdowns are not the solution, we cannot fall behind on regulation of the digital world and artificial intelligence. And much more needs to be done to ensure that we have the necessary regulation, necessary monitoring, and the necessary ability to enforce our protection that upholds the ethics that we believe are so important. The principles and guidelines for the use of digital and social media in elections in Africa were developed to help us address these gaps. 
These principles and guidelines were adopted by the Association of African Electoral Authorities, the AAEA, on the 6th of September 2023 in Benin. These guidelines look at responsibilities of different role players, including the state, election management bodies, digital companies, regulatory bodies, contestants, traditional and religious institutions, civil society organizations, and journalists. What is clear is that it is vital to have a robust legal and le regulatory framework that deals with online harms and prevents um, those harms from taking place by providing protection to all in electoral processes, in particular opposition candidates, journalists, and all vulnerable persons who are so often besieged by gender-based violence, intimidation, and harassment. We need independent regulatory structures that are also able to deal with ensuring that there's equitable access to the facilities of the digital era. We need to ensure that all regulatory bodies, including election management bodies, have the necessary means to ensure that they protect data privacy and promote access to information. We need the state to ensure that all of these oversight bodies and election management bodies are properly resourced to conduct their activities, including the tackling of digital harms. Digital and social media have different ways of sorting content to determine where and what is seen, how far it reaches and what prominence it gets. These are editorial decisions that they make. And it's something that needs to be disclosed and monitors. And the state needs to put in place a regulatory environment that will enable this disclosure and this monitoring. Election management bodies on their side need to cooperate with all relevant stakeholders to develop guidelines to promote transparency and to promote the kinds of awareness and understanding to address digital harms during the electoral cycle. Election management bodies also need to monitor advertising funding and the targeting methodology that is used by contestants and even technology companies themselves. Digital and social media companies need to support ways to ensure that people are informed if the content presented to them was not generated by a human, but was generated through artificial intelligence itself. So the African guidelines contain much more detail on what steps can and must be taken to address the risks that we face and to take hold of the positive opportunities that artificial intelligence provides. I thank you all for your time.